what's happening guys thanks for tuning in again to another episode thank you for joining me on this hot Colorado Springs day just got off work and today we have a special treat today we are going to be taking a look at my Toyota FJ about time for this been long overdue so guys stay tuned we have a lot to go over with her all right I don't even know where to start I have done so many things to this car since I got it I got it back in 2010, I think it was. It is a 2007, has 130,000 miles on it. I bought it when it was stock, and I basically have created the thing you see before you today. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you will know that I have changed the dang look at this car probably four or five times since I've owned it. I am never satisfied with how she looks, but right now she really isn't too horrible. As I said, guys, I am the only one who's ever touched this car, only one who's ever worked on it. Besides alignments, literally I have done everything to this car. That is another thing you guys should know about Billy and I. We do do all the work on our cars and basically no one else touches them besides us. And I'll be honest, I think it is really cool that Billy and I do work on our own cars because I mean, anybody can go buy a fancy car, go buy a built car, but you know, it takes skill to actually build your own and you know, basically create a work of art that no one else has besides you. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it now. So as I said, it is vinyl wrapped. Everything except the roof is wrapped. It is a matte jet black vinyl wrap with the white rafter stripes on the back. I like to call them, people call them zebra stripes, but I was definitely going for the rafter look. The hood does have the white hood insert. And for those of you who do follow me on Instagram, you do know this car has changed its style multiple times. This is the current, probably gonna be uh, the main style of it for now. Uh, I do like the wrap. I, Think it looks really creative definitely stands out in the crowd so definitely gonna stick with this one for a while so i guess like the frs video we'll go ahead and just start up front so as you guys see we do have the worn bumper worn bumper with the worn winch in there there is a fair lane behind the license plate that is one of those rugged ridge i believe the brand was uh little license plate flippers so we can flip that up get the winch on out cool little accessory uh, up front we do also have you can see the bud built skid plates that's the full set underneath all five pieces so very cool we do have our hella lights we have the 2014 limited edition white grill moving on in a little closer we do have our colorado fj cruisers grill badge as i turn into a bumper badge just because my grill is a little jam pack in there especially with the hella lights you can't really see much back there like that trd emblem um, also we do have our halo headlights which are projectors as well and we do have the diamond cuts turn signals, which are blacked out, the grayed out, whatever you want to call them. Look a little bit better than stock, I think. Moving on up to the hood. First thing you will see is we do have the Putco hood handles as well as the Putco vent mount with the little bug deflector rain guard up on the front end there. Uh, these originally were silver. I blacked them out just to make them match the rest of the car. I like it, it loses a little difference. Uh, basically breaks up the giant hood we have on these FJ. Moving on up to the lighting on the car, you will see first off, we do have the cow light mounts with the rigid cubes on either side of the windshield. Those are fantastic lights. Uh, I like the white covers, again, matches the whole rest of the car, as well as we do have an Op 7 50-inch light bar up on the roof with some mounts that mount into the Baja rack. As I said, we do have the Baja rack. It is the flat utility. Amazing rack, works perfect for the CVT rooftop tent, as well as mounting all your other goods, like my awning. I used to have the high lift jack up there, but I pulled that off. Um, I tread 4x4 mounts are on the other side, but love this rack and everything it comes with. Um, great company as well. Moving down from there real quick, we will talk about the mirrors. The mirrors do have the LED marker lights in them, as well as carbon fiber covers, which match the carbon fiber door handles. They do have a little bit of weathering from the sun here in Colorado, but I like them much better than the silver ones that were on here originally. We'll move back up top just for right now. As I said, we do have the ARB awning on the side. Fantastic for a fence, anything like that. We also do have a 30 inch light bar mounted to the back of the Baja rack. Great for backing up or, you know, giving those tailgaters a little bit of light on the highway as well as those tread 4x4s which I mentioned earlier. We will talk about the snorkel next. The snorkel is fully functional, not just for show, because all of the electronics have been sealed in the engine bay, as well as the breathers have been relocated on the differentials and the transmission. Moving on down from the roof rack and all those goodies up there, we do have the bushwhackers next you will see. These are the legit bushwhackers, not the Chinese knockoffs. Love these things, as well as they also do give a little bit more protection for my larger tires. Moving back to armor real quick, we have diamond plated the lower halves of the doors. Gives a little bit more protection from the rocks and all that stuff on the trail, as well as tree scrapes. Um, I really like the look as well. Makes it definitely look a little bit more rugged and tough. Moving on down from the diamond plate real quick, you will see that we do have the all pro rock sliders on this thing with the kick out in the back to protect that back quarter panel. finish up the armor real quick on this thing matching the worn front bumper we do have the worn rear bumper um, love this bumper it doesn't have a swing out on it 
but where it's just perfect for the needs I have. Since we're back here anyways, we'll go ahead and finish the back door setup I have right now. First off, you will see we do have the tail light guards. I believe they are from Body Armor, I think was the brand. Again, something I purchased a while ago. Um, really no functional purpose to those, because again, if you catch it on a tree, it'll rip that whole tail light out. But hey, I think they look pretty dang cool. Next up, you will see that we do also have the Chi-Town 4x4 gas pack mount. We do have the four gallon uh, roto pack on there for the gas, as well as the two gallon water tank and the roto pack just accessory box right there. All mounted up there with locks so no one can steal our stuff. Next up, we do have the most important item on the vehicle is we do have the Yeti bottle opener. Uh, gotta have that for any of the camping trips and all that good stuff. So definitely get one of those if you're out from there. We do have the All Pro CB antenna mount. Um, with a 48 inch fire stick, I believe it is. White, of course, to match the rest of the car. From there, we will talk about the last accessory I have back here on the back bumper. Uh, as I said, I did remove the high lift jack from the roof rack. Um, I did relocate it back here on the back bumper. I did weld on a custom mount back there. Um, gives it that almost looking like a swing out look, but definitely easier to get to, as well as gets it out of the way so I can mount those treads up there, as well as the awning. As I said, guys, I have done so many different things with this car. Um, I know I'm probably missing stuff, but I think that's about it for outside or exterior accessories. Next up, we'll go ahead and talk about the tire and wheel set. Yes, we do have 35 inches on the EFJ. Uh, these are 35 inch by 12 and a half R17s. Um, these are Nitto Trail Grapplers, and they are mounted on some fuel ANZAs. Now, these are not your typical fuel ANZAs because these are from Custom Offset, so these are actually fully functional beadlocks. Not necessarily road legal, but they are fully functional. The ring does come off locks that lip in for that bead. Uh, definitely love them, probably one of my favorite features of the car. Moving on up from the wheels and tires, let's get our first little taste of suspension. We do have the All Pro Long Travel set up here. This is the Gen 1. It was installed by yours truly. I did add some SDHQ limit straps because the first gen did not come with limit straps. Um, I have this kit paired up with some Fox 2.5 DSC shocks. These do have the remote reservoir and they do have the dual compression dampening for high and low speed. You gotta love when you're making a video and have to deal with planes. This one with Jeeps coming to bother you up here. I love the long travel setup. It gives lots more capabilities for this vehicle as opposed to stock. Along with that front long travel, we did pair it up with the Metal Tech rear long travel. A little hard to see back there, but we do have the Metal Tech long travel rear control arms. Pair it up with the Icon. I don't know if you see it back there, we do have the Icon long travel shocks for the back end giving us basically almost enough travel to match the front. In addition to those Metal Tech lower control arms and the Icon long travel shocks, can't see it, but we do have back up in there the offset upper control arms as well for the rear end, giving us a ton more travel than stock, um, giving it lots more capabilities on the trail. All right, guys, I think that's about it for the exterior. I'm, I know I'm already forgetting things, trying to get everything memorized. As I said, I've done so many things to this car. Uh, let's talk about under the hood real quick. We do have a colder intake. We do have a throttle body spacer, mainly just to make that colder intake fit a little bit better. Cause you know, let's be honest, throttle body spacers are pointless. I have wired everything with the aid of some blue C's, fuse relays, one in the front, one in the rear. We'll take a look at that soon. Um, I wanted to make, make sure all the wiring was perfect on the car. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm pretty sure that's about it. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about interior next. So moving on into the interior real quick. We do have, first off, as you guys saw in my last video, we do have some Sparco racing seats. Um, I did build some custom risers for these. They used to have four point, or yeah, the Sparco four point harnesses mounted back there, but I took those out of the FJ just because I don't have a cage, as you guys can see. Um, those are planted seat mounts. Great little setup here. I love these Sparco seats. I had brides in here before, but they are very impractical for the car. I'll post a picture of those just so everyone can see, but I do love these Sparcos. Very, very comfortable. Moving down from the seats, you will see we do have the Tuffy center console. It is lockable, and best part about this is I did lose the armrest with the Sparco racing seats, but with that Tuffy console, you do gain that armrest back. It's not as much, but you definitely do get a little place to rest your elbow. Moving on down from there, you will see first off, I did make some custom Jack Daniels shift knobs. These were pool balls. They were an eight ball and a cue ball. Um, decided to drill them out, make shift knobs out of them, as well as a Jack Daniels shift bag. From there, looking at the dash, we did wrap some stuff in carbon fiber. As you can see there, have that DC sticker from one of the previous looks. Um, steering wheel cover, of course. We do have the Sony navigation and um, Bluetooth head unit. We do also have, the iPad is not in here, but we do have the iPad mount as well. We do have some added horsepower, of course. Got the Hoonigan sticker, again, from another look, but just never got removed. 
Um, other than that, we do have our mauve armor foam mount, as I said in these FRX video. Love these things, hold the phone great. And then up top, we do have our Bearcat CB radio, again, mounted back there to that all pro mount with the fire stick antenna. And we do have a cowboy hat rack, of course. And then we also did add a little feature from the 2008s. These are those side window visors. Again, we have them on both sides here. Um, great little accessory. I love the look of them. Break up the you know gigantic roof we have. Um, I did have patches on here. I removed them because originally I was gonna wrap the roof, but I might put patches on there. Um, comment what you guys think. Should I wrap it or should I put the patches back up? And again, we have to deal with more planes. Sorry about that, guys. But again, we're on the academy, so have to deal with that but back inside we do also have of course a flashlight but not just a flashlight it is a taser so other than that we do have a scan gauge 2 in here um, as you guys know with the FJs these don't have many capabilities on the dash so we did add that in it gives them the average fuel economy um, horsepower voltage to the battery all that good stuff we do also have a sprint booster here's the controller it is connected down there on the pedal you really can't see it oh we do have some undercarriage or some under dash lighting sorry guys I totally forgot about that that's another old mod from like 10 years ago but back to the sprint booster we do have that again increase that throttle response um, Reviews, I'll probably post reviews on that Sprint Booster at some point, so stay tuned for those. Um, other accessories, we'll go ahead and go to the other side real quick. All right, guys, let's hit the passenger side real quick to finish out the front interior. First off, we do have the FJ door sills. Next up, we do have the stock FJ floor mats. I love these mats, really no point in getting the weather techs because these things do the job just great along with the rubber flooring. Um, next up, we'll talk about the switches real quick. I did mount my light bar switches here on the center console. Um, basically we have our front cow lights here so those turn on the cows here's the front 50 inch uh, off 7 light bar and then here is the rear 30 inch light bar so again fully functional nice clean wiring around there also putting the switches there leaves all the room for my other accessories I already have down here we have the USB we have all the stock accessories in here we also did do the mod to basically cut out all the trash control as well as do the diff lock in the rear end so you can lock that diff when you're in two wheel drive as opposed to doing it only when you're in four wheel from there we will talk about the rest of the stuff over here on the passenger side real quick as I said we do have the iPad mount it is a pan of ice um, really gives you lots of options with it you can basically push it all the way back to the dash bring it back towards me rotate it whatever you like really freestyle with it um, it does mount right to that center console right there uh, great little mount holds the iPad air just fine Underneath, we do have more of those LEDs from a while back, as I said. And back here, you cannot see it, but connected to the computer, we do have the unit chip back in there with the switch for the multiple options for basically your 85% octane, or you can get the 91 tune. Um, yeah, great little tuning device. Um, not many options for the FJ, but does the job just fine. All right, that about does it for the inside of the front of the FJ. Let's go ahead and talk about the rear storage setup I have. Get this opened up for you guys. So I do have a rear storage set up back here. First off, we do have some drawers. There's some Rubbermaids back in there. Holds all the, you know, um, winching accessories, all that kind of good stuff, as well as blankets and other survival goodies and all that. On the back door, I did make just a custom, basically, bag mount back here. Have our shovel mount in there for the snow and all that. Another blanket. Lots of pouches for anything, really. Has some jumper cables in there right now. Um, has some liquid wrench, all that kind of good stuff. You have a little first aid kit back here. From the storage setup, we will move on over here real quick to some of the audio. I did build a custom subwoofer box because I do not have one over here on the stock side. Um, it is an Alpine sub. Again, I built it back in there so it fits nicely in that cubby. Um, the amp fort is mounted back here underneath the storage console or the drawer system I have here. Uh, I got lots of room back there so I added, actually mounted it back in there to so keep it out of the way so I can actually maintain my storage capacity back in here for all my junk. Uh, we do have a fire extinguisher mounted back here just in case of emergencies. We also do have, I didn't really feel like spending money for the spring tail, so I did weld myself up a cargo barrier. Uh, very simple. I did want to add in some holes so I could throw some stuff from the front to the back of the car. And lastly, we do have our compressor mounted back here as well. It is a Smitty built or you know, shitty bill as they say. Uh, we also did add in another blue seas. As I said, it is controlling our little cigarette outlier box back here. Everything is on a switch so you can turn everything on or off. It gives us a voltage reading as well just to make sure we're not burning anything out. Again, everything is functional. All wired up, nice and clean. All right guys, that about does it. A few things I did forget to mention. We did add in different speakers throughout the car. We went some Rockford Fosgates, uh, much better than the stock speakers. We were having lots of issues with those. Blew out a few in the doors. But I think that's about everything on the car. I know I'm probably forgetting some things. 
or I'll probably make an updated video to this later on. Comment what you guys think. I love this car. Probably one of my you know all time favorites. Uh, definitely, as bad as it is to say, I like it more than the FRS. It definitely breaks some necks. So love this thing. Yep, and as I said, guys, I already did forget a few things. First off, we do have a custom exhaust on here. First off, we have the Doug Thorley long tube headers connected to the Doug Thorley Y pipe. We do have a custom Borla coming off of that. The whole exhaust is going to get rebuilt here soon. I do have a leak here on the bike's passenger side over there, um, right basically at the Y pipe. Need to figure that out. But I think that about does it now. So hopefully that's it. But I think that about does it, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, um, share, comment on what you guys want to see too. I mean, we're just trying to make videos to see if anybody likes them. So again, post what you guys want to see. We have some good stuff coming up. Um, stay tuned and thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.